and it has the backside power. So with PowerVIA, we are able to have one of the best performance power and area in the competition. Intel Foundry service is in the Dragon, Bando Chichi Katun there. Today, in the open AI and the Sensing Young AI, Kogin Jamani Sinda or Kiagrane. Yeah, the, can you explain to like the the automotive software-defined vehicle? Yeah, yeah. so software-defined vehicle uh, is uh, in your, com your current vehicle, there's over 100 uh, uh, components that are running uh, individually to, to monitor things like your gauge cluster, uh, your Android Auto, uh, rear view mirror, object detection, and all that. Um, what Intel is proposing is that this move to a software-defined vehicle in which a single computer uh, can perform many of these functions um, down here uh, rather than having individual components doing that. Um, from a scalability and from um, a perspective of available components like what we ran into uh, with supply chain issues in the in the pandemic, this would solve that because it'd be one component versus a hundred. Um, so a little bit easier to do. And from a safety perspective, um, it's just as safe. And we're showing the software uh, set up here where it's running on uh, a hypervisor mm -hmm. um, and several VMs, and it organizes it in such a way that your critical infrastructure, so your instrument cl cluster and all the things that need to run, get the most resources. And then secondarily, your rear view camera and your Android Auto get the secondary resources. And then lastly, your things like your rear view seat entertainment, so somebody can play a video game, okay. uh, movie, okay. or use the conversational AI assistant. Those will become the third most important. And if those crash, it has no impact on on something like this keeping it safe and secure and uh, and, and and available for the you know the future it's everything the operating by the the computer right there correct okay. and this is showing the resource monitor right here okay so you'll see each one so the ubuntu yeah, sos that's going to be your gauge cluster okay the android vm that's going to be these guys right here and right the in the in the rear yeah and then your ubuntu guest is going to be okay. these three guys over here the conversational ai and your rear seat entertainment and that's all running within this with plenty of overhead so that you're not okay. stressing the computer too much and okay. yeah car and portainment system like you know so many kind of the, the by operating by the, the intel automotive yeah okay thank you for absolutely yeah. thank you 이게 지금 뭐냐 하면 이제 차량용 엔포테인먼트 시스템이 인텔의 그 컴퓨터를 통해서 그 운영되는 것을 이제 보여주고 있거든요. 뭐 QNX 같은 경우에는 뭐냐면 저기 블랙베리 그거 앤드로이드는 이제 구글의 앤드로이드 오토 그리고 리눅스 같은 경우에는 테슬라도 이제 리눅스를 쓰고 있거든요. 테슬라 뭐 인텔 컴퓨터를 쓰는 건 아니지만 테슬라도 이제 리눅스 기반의 어떻게 보면 차량용 엔포테인먼트 시스템을 이제 구동하고 있는데 그게 이제 인텔 컴퓨터를 통해서 구동이 된다는 걸 이제 설명해 준다는 거죠. 이게 이제 또 퀄컴하고 똑같은데 이제 퀄컴도 앞에 보면 이제 트렁크가 전기차 기반인 경우에는 비어 있거든요. 엔진이 없잖아요. 그렇기 때문에 엔진이 없는 상태에서 이제 컴퓨터를 집어넣어 가지고 모든 차량의 운전대부터 시작해서 차량용 엔포테인먼트 시스템 그리고 뒤에 앉아서 볼수 있는 게이밍이라든지 모든 걸 하, 저 컴퓨터 하나로 할수 있다는 걸 이제 설명해 준 겁니다. 이 오퍼레이팅 시스템 OS를 이제 돌수 있는 하나 이제 컴퓨터가 되는 거죠. 저게 뭐 그래픽 카드도 들어가 있고 CPU, 뭐 GPU 이런 게 모든 게 이제 들어가 있는 거죠. Can you just explain to like Intel Gaud and Intel Xeon system? Yes. Yeah. So uh, Intel Gaudi is an AI accelerator that is dedicated for deep learning training and inference. Uh, Xeon is the scale is the CPU that's used in our data centers. Like a server, right? Server CPU, okay. correct. Yeah, so in a typical Gaudi server, we actually have eight Gaudi 2 cards and then two Xeon CPUs. Okay. And so this demo right here, uh, we, we ran a multimodal model. So this model is called Latent Diffusion Model 3D. And what it does is it generates an image and also a depth map. So it can tell you how close and how far objects are in an image. And so when you combine the two together, we can create something like this that you see here. A, it's kind of like 3D. Yeah. Like, a, like a 3D panoramic uh, image that you kind of immerse yourself in. So if you want, you can actually try generating one yourself. It's only the side by side or just, you know, up and down? Up and down as well. Oh, okay. Up and down. It's as kind well. of the VR. Yeah. Kind of like a VR. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the what industry is using the, this kind of the system? The what industry? What industry would yeah. use this kind of system? Yeah. So any any industry that wants to do 
high performance, like really like deep learning training and inference with okay. very large language models okay. or models that have maybe 70 billion parameters or more. Large models. Can you try to the other country too? Yeah, we can try others as well. Yeah, so this will take about 50 seconds to run. But while we wait, uh, let me show you some other scenes that this has generated. So this one, they put city view with canals. So looks like this kind of looks like Amsterdam. Okay. You can see it's uh, pretty, pretty interesting. So use cases for this model would probably be for game designers that they want to design an environment at a very cost-effective way, or maybe they want to create some VR or perhaps even virtual conference rooms to make some make things more interesting. The, in, the Gaudi server is actually remote, so we actually it's actually hosted on the cloud. Okay. Uh, so we send this prompt to the cloud, do the processing, okay. and it sends the result back to us. Okay. So it looks like New York City building. So it looks like this. Uh, so I think that's the new, uh, the new condo skyscraper that New York City has. This might be uh, maybe World Trade Center. Okay. But yeah, it creates like these images that based on your text prompt. Uh, and right here, this is the Gaudi 2 card. Okay. On a typical Gaudi 2 server, there would be eight of these cards and then two Xeon processes connected together. Let me explain this one as well. So right here, we're doing training on the bridge tower model. Okay. So this is another multimodal model. Here, we're doing head-to-head -head between eight H100 cards and also eight Intel Gaudi 2 cards. Okay. And we're getting about a 40% speed up from using Gaudi. And so one of the main takeaways is the H100 costs about 96 US dollars per hour on AWS. Okay. And you might be waitlisted because everyone's trying to get this card. But for Intel Gaudi 2, you can access it on our Intel Developer Cloud for only $10.42 US dollars. So almost one tenth the cost. And so the takeaway is price over performance as well as accessibility for Intel Gaudi 2. Okay, 여기서 이야기하는 게 이제 엔비디아 H100와 그 인텔 저 가오디 2의 지금 성능 비교를 하는데 1.45배 정도 이제 빠르고 그리고 가격 대비해서 엔비디아 H100보다 인텔 가오디가 더 싸다. 그렇기 때문에 비용 절감적인 측면과 속도적인 측면에서 엔비디아를 능가한다. 이렇게 이제 설명을 해주고 있는 거예요. 이쪽 인크로더에도 the HBM, the Samsung or the SK Hynix. SK Hynix. Do you know the HBM is uh, Samsung or SK Hynix? Uh, that I don't know. But I can, oh. I can, I can, we can get you that information. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're gonna say this exact same. Oh. 잘 모르겠대요. <laughs> anyway, the three. Three companies are making the HBM, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's why yes. Samsung and the SK yeah, Hynix. It's, it's and only the one of those. Okay. Okay. End of the year, you guys the producing the Gaudi number three. Yes, yes. yes. So Gaudi the version three. Yeah. Gaudi three. So Intel CEO uh, already showed Gaudi three in December. Okay. And uh, early this year, it will okay. actually officially release uh, as a product. Yep. Okay. Gaudi three upgraded them version. End of year, 그러니까 12월 정도에 출시될 예정이라고 이렇게 이야기를 합니다. Sure. So I'm the founder of this tree. We built a conversational AI platform in partnership with Intel. And what this AI assistant does is support retail operations. So it's meant for the employee or the general manager and allows them to ask any questions on how to run the restaurant, new promotions, how do I close the store. So by example, here is a you know 140 page operations manual okay and that's very hard to get staff trained on yeah. that and understanding yeah. especially in restaurants and hospitality people leave after a couple of months okay so you have to keep spending money to keep training okay and so now the idea is with an ai assistant you can start to help give superpowers if you will yeah. to your employees so if they have questions it's they can ask kind of the trainer right it's kind of like the trainer yeah okay. always there to reinforce um, and if there are new guidance, new procedures, okay. it's always up to date and okay. will always give you the right answer. Okay. Okay. Now what's really interesting and what I'm going to have Mahar talk about okay. is that this is running completely on the laptop. Okay. Not attached to the network. It's not the cloud. No, it's completely the edge. So okay. this latest product that Intel launched, right, the okay. Moral Drive AI PC. So we actually hosted the 
uh, large language model, the, okay. the Llama 27B model, and Vistri is actually running its uh, employee assist chatbot uh, on top of the Llama 27B model. And everything, Vistri's package, Llama 27B, everything is actually running locally on this. Mm -hmm. And we have three ways to run it. You could run it in CPU, you can run it on GPU or neural processing unit that we have. Today, this demo is actually running on GPU. Okay. But depending on you know which particular device you want to run it on, you can choose it. And it's like a one-line code change in Intel's OpenVINO inference framework. You just give the guidance to OpenVINO. Say, you guys just it. give it to the compute, to, to the, like the training person or? You give it directly to the end yeah. user, the employee. Okay, yes. uh, okay. the lab they just you know, correct. So yeah. start it themselves. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it actually eliminates the, the like supervisors. Okay, and I, interference, I understand. Right? Because they save the, the money and the time. Correct. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you just give them access, right? And then you can add all kinds of uh, interesting stuff, like you can gamify it, like you know. You want to see which employee is actually curious and uh, asking highest number of questions, and you can give them additional credits for that, being very proactive, right? So all kinds of things can be done. But the bottom line is, like you, like you know, uh, you're you're able to quickly onboard the employee and mm -hmm. make them self-sufficient, right? But anything else you guys can do to like with this program? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a lot of applicability in healthcare, mm -hmm. in biotech, life sciences, okay, uh, manufacturing. Anywhere where it requires highly specialized oh, knowledge. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Like specialized knowledge in real time. like regulation. Exactly. And, uh, Think about okay. this, you have a 150 page manual, yeah. right? I mean, you can't expect an employee to learn by heart in one day. Right? Now, this is a static manual. Imagine now you have real time data okay. that's coming from sales, that's coming okay. from inventory, that's coming from supply chain. And it gets very complex to make the best decisions. But now you have an AI assistant that can uh, support you. Uh, in that understanding. Okay, thank you for the explanation. So the way we get around hallucination yeah. is this is we a, heard that word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The way, <laughs> this is a rag-based system, uh -huh. which means that you establish a knowledge base, yep. and the language model is going off of the knowledge base. So when it doesn't find something within the context of the knowledge base, it doesn't hallucinate. It says, I do not know. Because that's really important because we want to know, as a platform and the brand, the end customer, wants to know when a question can't be answered. Because that's important, valuable information. Mm. So the, the concept of this platform is a little bit different to essentially protect from hallucinations. Mm. Cool. So how about uh, another language? But not English. Yeah, so right now, primarily we support five languages. Uh -huh. um, French, Spanish, Italian, German, English. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to start to support Mandarin and mm -hmm. other types of language sets is very straightforward. So I think a lot of these large language models, and this is this is innovation happening in open source, Yeah, yeah. right? So the, the velocity of the improvements of these models are dramatic, mm -hmm. like literally in the last three months. Sure, sure. So starting to expand it to other language sets, um, you know, a lot of these out of the box will support Korean, for instance, mm -hmm. but uh, you want to make sure that it's calibrated, let's say, in a manufacturing setting mm -hmm. in Korean, and that takes a little bit of work. In the US, there are many people who are 한 200페이지, 300페이지 되는 규정집을 매니저들은 다 이해를 못 한다고. 근데 이걸 이제 유저에게 이제 주면 저 컴퓨터를 통해서 어떻게 보면 그 새로운 직장을 얻은 사람이 그 트레이닝, 그 한국말로 훈련을 할수 있는 그 시스템을 제공해 주는 저 컴퓨터 시스템이라고 이렇게 보시면 될것 같아요. 그렇기 때문에 이제 사람이 할수 없는 좀 정교하고 그리고 레귤레이션이 이제 계속 바뀌잖아요. 그래서 사람이 이제 숙지를 못하고 잘못을 저질릴 수가 있는데 이 시스템을 통해서 어떻게 보면 뭐 규정이라든지 그걸 계속 이제 업데이트를 해주면서 좀 팔로업을 하는 그런 것이라고 이런 게 이해를 하시면 됩니다. 네, 그러니까 이제 엣지 컴퓨터로 이제 되는 거라 가지고 이제 클라우드로 가는 게 아니라 여기서 이제 자체적으로 퍼스널 컴퓨터에서 이제 이게 구동이 되는 거예요. We just we just introduced right our Intel Core Ultra, you know, CPUs, new generation of CPUs. Very different because it has CPU, GPU, and now an NPU, a neural processing unit that does AI acceleration. 
right? So that's the base chip between behind all of these designs. And so what we're showing is just that that chip can go into a very wide variety of designs, all the way from 13 inch, 14 inch, all the way up to 16 inch devices. Okay. In some cases, these also have discrete graphics cards like an RTX 4070 from NVIDIA, so they could do gaming as well as being very thin and light, long battery life okay. and very power efficient devices, right? So showing some AI workloads, right, that are accelerated by that NPU. We're also showing, showing our, our Intel Unison 2.0, which is a way of connecting your tablet or phone devices to your Windows PC to be able to share files, share messages, um, as well as, you know, um, actually being able to extend the display. So these are all just premium notebook devices from a variety of OEMs and um, showing the vast choice that people have in their, their PCs. How much is it different between the, like the old computer and the digital, like a price? The, the prices actually won't change that much for these. They're, these are mostly premium PCs that cost like 800 to maybe $1,500 oh. here in the US. Well, not much, um, no. but, but they're, you know, again, so that pricing hasn't changed much, but it's really that, that new user experience of having the AI acceleration okay. built in, okay. right? Also have improved the power efficiency, so battery life of these new devices is gonna be greater. Um, as well, they have, uh, many of these have the Intel Arc graphics built in, which is a higher level of graphics performance. So even doing maybe a little bit of gaming on some of these devices is not out of the question. Is it developed the own device, the AI, you know, the market? Uh, well, so I may not be understanding that question, but, okay. but a AI, so AI workloads have actually been around for a while. They've been running on CPUs and GPUs. The NPU is a much more efficient way of running a lot of those AI workloads. So by introducing that, you're able to do more, but not consume as much battery life on these really thin devices. So, so AI, the number of experiences, the number of capabilities AI is bringing is expanding. And so that NPU helps answer that question of doing it efficiently without sacrificing battery life. 가격적인 측면과 속도적인 측면 그리고 효율적인 측면. 여기 보시면 이제 야, 얇은 그 노트북에 이제 장착이 되고요. 그러면서 어떻게 보면 이제 배터리 용량도 적게 쓰고 그리고 가격도 그렇게 많이 비싸지도 않고 그러면서 AI를 이제 구동시킬 수 있는 그런 좀 성능이 향상이 된 CPU GPU, NPU라고 이렇게 이야기를 하고 있는. Doesn't have like the problem with the other the application. There's a lot of different applications out okay. there available, as, and, and and again, more coming with okay. AI capabilities, oh. right? So we're showing everything from like AI doing, um, you know, music, music and content creation. So we're, we have a music app okay. that allows you to take a song and split it into individual soundtracks, right? That's done through AI. It's listening to the song, it's splitting it. We can even actually have AI listen to the song and do a lyrics transcription from that song. So there's a lot of different AI apps here. Okay. Um, that's just one example. But we're seeing we're seeing more come uh, every day, and in fact, over on that okay. side, we've got three other AI apps. There's a security and privacy app. There's a video editing app, so you can do background replacement with that. Um, and we're also doing an intelligent assistant app over there called Superpower, which again helps you write emails, helps you you know respond to, um, and and basically is just your smart assistant and helping you do your work and productivity. 지금 계획적으로 이제 개발 중이고 많은 AI 기반의 앱들이 출시가 되고 있기 때문에 그건 뭐 걱정할 필요가 없다라고 이렇게 이야기를. You can see the FPS here going from 30 all the way up to 72, and that's because we've been able to take our graphics tile to put it on our SOC with our CPUs, and then we've been able to enable our XESS technology with GX12 uh, and pump that graphics potential even higher, or that FPS. Okay. Or you can change it up to be more visual quality-wise, or you can use it to pump up the FPS. So that kind of enables us to get into these other form factors, like the handheld gaming consoles. Okay. So this is kind of your PC on-the-go gaming console, and you can play games like these and, and play them at a low, even low rate wattage. So you can actually have a long battery life, uh, or you can play games like like a dragon. That's kind of more 
their uh, AAA, and you can turn on XESS and get like good frame rates on that as well. Or you can just use it as your Windows setup. Okay. So it's a full-on Windows PC. So we've worked very closely with MSI to come up with custom cooling technology. Okay. So this is a dual fan and to keep our Intel Core Ultra 7 nice and cool. So you can actually do high tunage or higher wattage tunage. We have this one set from, goes from 20 watts to all the way up to 40 watts. So you can use it to get some good performance or use it for you know, higher end tasks. Or we have the other technologies that we've been able with them to get lower wattage so you can have a longer battery life depending on what your usage is. You know, you don't have to go to the web browser. Yep. You don't have to click the icon. You can just press the button. Oh, cool. And it comes up right there. So again, there's uh, kind of three basic classes of kind of things that you can do with the Copilot. Yep. The first one being like kind of OS level type of things. Mm -hmm. So it's like, again, natural language, turn on dark mode. Yep. So I don't know, I no longer have to kind of sort through the settings and the menus to figure out, mm -hmm. you know, oh, there it is. Turn off. Oh dark mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sorry about that. Cool. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> so now we can turn off dark mode. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, cool. there you go. So mm -hmm. uh, connecting Bluetooth devices, mm -hmm. taking screenshots, those are kind of things that you can just type in natural language and it'll uh, help you out. Yeah, trying so to get you to don't have to click, click, click. click yes. And, you know, the right. Five, you can time. just naturally uh, type it. It looks up, finds it. Compile, typing the order, the operating system. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next thing is uh, kind of like large language model, yeah, yeah. like chatbot. So uh, some of the prompts I like is, hey, uh, I say the brightest C program to check if the number is prime. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with coding or if you're kind of new to it, mm -hmm. again, you can treat this like a large language model, like a chatbot. You type in write a C program. It goes out to the cloud. Yeah. And it finds, explains to you what a prime number is, and then it'll actually provide code for you. Mm -hmm. So whether you are an kind of expert programmer or yeah. new to programming, yeah, it'll give you an example of code that you can use for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Intel Core Ultra is. Uh, What's the benefit about to using the Microsoft Copilot? So, right now, uh, Microsoft Copilot yep. is all on the cloud. So there are there is there are some functions within Core Ultra processors and Windows 11 that utilize the NPU that okay. is only on Core Ultra yep. process. Okay. So I'm just, hold on. Let me mm -hmm. stop this. So there is a new TV thing called Studio Effects. Oh, the new 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 version. Or... So it's already in Windows 11. If ah, you, really? Yeah. Oh. If you have an MPU uh -huh. and you click there, you will see Studio Effects. Oh. Okay. So let me make this bigger for you. Okay. Oh, cool. Let me move this over to MPU here. MPU가 있을 때 Windows 11에 아예 user facing이라는 기능이 생겼대요. So you uh -huh. can see the MPU is here. Yep. And now with Everyone doing a lot of remote work and such. Sure. You know, when you're doing remote work and you're doing a lot of video calls, yep. you know, uh, auto reframing, which is, you know, keeping you in the shot. Let's see. Oh, uh, reframing, yep. Yeah. Okay, there's the blur. Oh, okay. and MP is working, yep. Yeah. MPU is working. Now let me do this. Okay. Yep. MPU is cool. working. So if you can think about doing video conference calls uh -huh. all day, yeah. now we've offloaded this work mm. to the NPU. So now that leaves more cycles for your CPU and your GPU mm -hmm. to do more work and not utilizing those cycles um, for things like you know auto reframe or background segregation. Uh, NPU has in the window. 인텔 코어를 했을 때에 새로 생기는 기능이 저는 윈도우 11을 깔고 있거든요. 근데 윈도우 11에서 이런 기능인지 몰랐어요. 근데 왜 몰랐는지 봤더니 이게 NPU가 탑재된 인텔 코어 CPU가 있어야지만 가능한 기능이더라고요. 뭐냐면 윈도우 11에 저희가 보통 여기 메뉴 누르잖아요. 이렇게. 근데 이게 보면 스튜디오 이펙트라고 하는 게 있더라고요. 근데 저는 없었거든요. 근데 이 스튜디오 이펙트라고 하는 걸 눌렀더니 여기에 이렇게 세팅할 수 있는 화면이 나오고 이거를 제가 물 카메라 이펙트 세팅으로 들어가 보겠습니다. 그럼 여기 보시면 
NPU라고 하는 녀석 이렇게 나오잖아요. NPU, 그죠? NPU라고 하는 녀석이 이제 저는 없었는데 윈도우 10이라는 아, 그 인텔 CPU에 있는 거죠. 그리고 NPU라고 하는 녀석이 지금은 워킹을 안 하고 있잖아요. 근데 제가 여기에서 만약에 오토매틱 프레이밍을 해볼게요. 그렇게 하면 얘가 이제 오, 그죠? 저를 이렇게 따라오죠. 따라오는 거를 볼수 있고요. 그 다음에 백그라운드 이펙트를 하면 이게 블러 처리가 되죠. 이렇게 되면서 이제 여기에서 얘가 컴퓨터를 조금씩 쓰고 있는 모습을 보여주게 돼요. 그래서 NPU 자체가 이렇게만 돼야 되는 것 같고, 만약에 또 제가 아이 컨택 기능을 이제 키게 되면, 만약에 저쪽에 있는 사람들이 저랑 이제 회의를 할 때, 제 눈을 이제 계속 따라오는 거죠, 얘가. 그래서 제가 계속 스크린을 보고 있는 것처럼, 이렇게. 지금, 시, 지금 보실지 모르겠는데, 지금 잘 보세요. 아주, 아주 재밌어요. 자, 보세요. 자, 도희 좀잘 봐봐요. 잘 봐봐 내가 이거 아이컨택 재미있어 이게 보면 내가 여기에서 눈을 이렇게 하고 있으면 이렇게 낮춰져 있잖아요 자 아이컨택 켜보겠습니다 제가 보고 있는 것처럼 보이죠 그죠 전 스크린 안 보고 있어요 지 실은 전 이루고 있는 거죠 이루고 있는 거 있는데 아이컨택이 제가 지금 보고 있는 것처럼 예 네, 이상하잖아요 이상하잖아요 이게 이게 되는 거예요 근데 실제로 이게 이제 m p u 를좀 프로세서 많이 쓰는 거 그러니까 막 졸려 내가 졸려 그래가지고 아 어, 회의 못 하겠어 막 이럴 때 보면은 이걸 이제 많이 안 켜놓으면 아 어, 졸려 이렇게 되는데 이 상태에서 내가 이걸 켰어 이렇게 하면은 예 눈눈 눈 마주 마주치고 있죠 지금 예 네, 이렇게 된다는 거 그래서 이게 가능한 게 m p u 가 갖는 기능이다 이렇게 볼수 있을 것 같고 확실히 이 인텔코 울트라 칩이 노트북에 많이 들어가잖아요 근데 노트북에서 이제 회의를 할때 아무래도 편하게 쓸수 있는 가벼운 노트북인데 이런 기능이 있다면 확실히 바로 회의 때 직접적으로 도움이 될것 같다 라는 생각이 듭니다 와 드디어 이 버튼이 들어갔어요 윈도우 코파일로 근데 이게 지금 이게 들어가면 다른 게 없어지나 했는데 기능이 들어갔고요 이거 자체가 영문 버전 윈도우라서 한글이 안 깔려 있네요 어쨌든 상당히 쿨하고요 확실히 이게 지금 인텔코 울트라가 왜 필요한지를 아주 직관적으로 볼수 있는 어떤 데모가 아닐까 싶고 어, 저도 이거 해가지고 졸릴 때 이렇게 할때좀 화면을 보면 상당히 괜찮을 것 같다는 라 생각이 확실히 들긴 하네요 네, 좀 확실히 이 CPU가 왜 달라야 되는지를 좀 보여주는 어떠한 계기가 아니었나 이렇게 보여줍니다. 앞으로 더 기대되네요.